BenQ recently released two new projectors, the TK700 and the X3000i, with the X3000i being the higher end model of the two. BenQ asked which one I wanted to review, and well, I chose the X3000i because I like higher end stuff. Now, before the X3000i, I was using BenQ's TH685 for about a year and a half, which was about an average projector in most respects, but had 120 hertz. This X3000i, on the other hand, is not average at all, and that includes its $2,000 price tag. And while it is expensive, I'm going to tell you why I'd spend my own two Gs, even if BenQ didn't send me one, because it's just so good. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the biggest selling point of this projector, the lasers. Traditional projectors use an incandescent bulb as the light source, which then passes through a color wheel to produce colors. The problem with this is that these bulbs get extremely hot, and they have a pretty poor lifespan of just 2,000 hours on average. The TH685's bulb can go about 4,000 hours during normal use, with energy savings modes allowing it to last about 12,000 hours, which is awesome, but these modes make the colors look like crap, and nobody wants that, right? Of course not. So what BenQ did with the X3000i is add LEDs which replace the traditional bulb as the light source. These LEDs last much longer, with the X3000i rated for 20,000 hours of light source life under normal use, and 30,000 hours on eco mode. That's literally 10 to 15 times more light life than the average projector bulb. Now, I don't recommend eco mode because just like the TH685, colors don't look that good or as good, and I wouldn't even worry about the 10,000 less hours on normal mode versus eco mode because even 20,000 hours is crazy. To put that many hours into perspective, you'd have to use this projector for eight hours a day, every single day for seven years straight to hit 20,000 hours. Safe to say you'll probably replace the projector before the LEDs die. BenQ didn't stop there though, because this isn't any ordinary LED projector, no. Most LED projectors you find are three LED projectors, meaning that there's one LED for each primary color, red, green, and blue. Add some optics and a few beam combiners and you have your image. The X3000i, on the other hand, is a four LED projector. It still has all the same stuff as three LED, but adds a blue pump LED. This pump is important because the green LED in three LED projectors aren't actually green, but rather converted light from blue. The reason why three LED projectors do this is because green light is responsible for most of the brightness to our eyes, but brightness of a pure green LED isn't so bright. So company use blue light, which is much brighter, and convert it to green to have higher brightness. And this is where the X3000 literally shines. Because it, bless you. Because it, <laughs> Because it has the blue pump LED, it's converting 40% more green light, which means that, according to BenQ at least, this X3000i is about 10% brighter overall compared to a three LED projector. Now, 10% doesn't sound like much, but in dark viewing experiences, which is where you'll probably be using this thing, 10% is a big difference. Now, I don't have any three LED projectors to compare this to, but I have been using the TH685 for about a year and a half, again, which is pretty standard for a projector bulb, again, just with 120 hertz. The difference from that to the X3000i was immediately apparent when I turned the X3000i on for the first time. The colors were the biggest difference. Now, I can't show you the detailed Kalman charts that you're used to seeing because it turns out my colorimeter doesn't support laser projectors, but believe me when I tell you that the colors are very vibrant while also being accurate. They're not crazy saturated to the point where colors look overly saturated. They're done just great. Part of this has to do with the fact that this projector has 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. At least that's what BenQ says. I have no clue if that's actually true without capturing any data, but what I do know for sure is that this projector is projecting the P3 spectrum and the colors are very rich and vibrant while again being accurate. It looks just as good as any wide gamut monitor, including the ones I reviewed in the past. So think of that and apply it here. Now, the other reason why colors look great and accurate is because the projector calibrates itself not only to be accurate, but also to retain an image that looks similar to what it looks like out of the box until the day the thing dies. Remember how I told you three LED projectors use blue light and convert it to green? Well, the way they do that is through a process called excitation. Basically, a ceramic phosphor medium gets excited, then delivers that green color, but that phosphor decays over time. Not so exciting, is it? This means that colors will shift as a projector ages and can have a certain tint to it. You might've seen it before. 
Combine that with the fact that most projectors don't calibrate themselves, especially at this price point, and you have a projector that won't look anywhere near as good as the X3000i throughout the years of use. Another thing that's great on the X3000i are the black levels. Now, it's no OLED, let me be clear about that, but it's much better than my 75-inch Vizio Quantum P series, which has only 240 local dimming zones. Dark scenes on the Vizio look like absolute trash because of the massive white halos that the TV produces. There just aren't enough zones for the size of the TV. It got to the point where I was just looking at those nasty distracting halos more than the actual content, so I turned off the local dimming and had it set to static backlight, and everything just looks much better. I mean, it's still not great, but it's much better. And that's still not saying much because the uniformity of that TV is also really bad. Projectors don't really have this problem because one, there's no backlight, so you don't have to worry about uniformity as much, and two, you don't have to worry about the ugly halos because, again, there's no backlight zones to create halos. Now, the reason I bought that TV in the first place was because I love massive viewing experiences, though I still think 75 inches is not big enough, in my opinion. But at the time of buying the TV, I had only two options. Buy the Vizio, which was the best bang for the buck at the time, costing about 1,300 American Eagles, or I could buy a similarly priced projector, which lets me get the larger size that I want, but with much worse overall performance because the room that I put it in at the time wasn't light controlled. Obviously I went with a TV, but even in a room where there's bright sunlight seeping through the curtains, the X3000i is still a viewable viewing experience, just a somewhat washed out one, and I don't like that. So I mainly use a projector at night, and I tell you what, Bobby, if you're in a room where this projector can perform at its best, this smacks down any non-OLED TV I've used so far, apart from probably the higher-end QLED Samsungs and such. I haven't used them, so I have no clue how they perform. Now, I'm in the process of building a house that has a basement with no windows, so it's going to be totally light-controlled with a projector screen, because as you probably noticed by now, I don't have a projector screen. And even without one, just projecting it to my off-white wall, everything looks great. Brightness was also good. It's rated at 3000 lumens, but again, I can't verify that. But what I will say is that my TH685 had a peak of about 80 lumens projecting about 12 feet away from my wall, and this X3000i is noticeably brighter. HDR also looks good. It uses the HDR10 format, not HDR10+, sadly, or Dolby Vision, but highlights get pretty bright and darks get pretty dark while retaining good detail. It really does have that kind of laser projector movie theater look to it. Now, the X3000i uses Android TV via an Android TV stick that you can hide inside the projector. Functionally, it looks just like any Android TV, but sometimes it could be a pain to use because of how slow and laggy it can be. It also doesn't support Netflix. I remember asking BenQ about Netflix back when I made the TH685i video, and they said they were looking into getting it supported, but it's been like two years at this point, and I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. And that's fine for me because I mainly plug in my PS5 and my Apple TV since they perform much better than the Android TV stick. And if you plug one of those two devices or even anything else in, that will support Netflix into the projector. I don't know why this TV stick doesn't. Maybe the port that it goes into doesn't have HDCP support, no idea. Anyway, while we're on the subject of PS5s, the gaming performance of this thing is nuts. Well, sort of, I'll tell you what I mean. You can go either 4K 60Hz or 1080p up to 240Hz. At 4K, input lag is good and response times, or motion blur as you may know it, is average. Meaning that fast motion scenes will have the normal trail you're used to seeing. Not too much, but not anything less. It's the same experience if you play at 1080p 120Hz, which a lot of PS5 games support. It's not as blurry as 60Hz, but it's also nothing special. It's about an average 120Hz experience. Now, 240Hz on this projector is something else. I don't know how, but 240Hz has response times that come close to CRT displays, near-perfect response times. The only problem with that is, one, you need a decently strong PC to maintain at least 240Hz, Two, you need to connect a PC to the projector, and I don't think there are many people that are primarily using this for PC gaming, on a projector at least. And three, you need to play games that are meant to run at at least 240 frames, like CSGO, Siege, Valorant, and so on, on a projector. And it's like, 
are you going to use this as a competitive gaming projector? Is this someone's first choice for going pro? If so, then that's fine, you do you, but I doubt any single person watching this is going to be using this for 240 hertz competitive Valorant. Now, I'm not saying 240 hertz is a waste on this projector because it's not. I just think improving response times at 60 hertz and 120 hertz is more valuable than having 240 hertz on a projector. I don't know, my opinion might change when I set up my new basement and have this connected to my PC, but I'll worry about that when it happens. For now, I can only go off of what I use this for, and that's mainly for PS5 gaming. It's fantastic. Having a massive display with great colors that pop, with great gaming performance, is genuinely a good experience. And I can't wait to have this beast set up in my basement, hooked up to some great audio with my PC, PS5, and Apple TV, and just go crazy with gaming and movies. Speaking of, the speakers on the X3000i are good. It has two 5 watt speakers, which isn't technically great, but these speakers fight above their weight class and have been a godsend for me because this townhouse apartment, which is above another townhouse apartment, has a noise reverberating structure. So earlier when I had my Samsung Q70R soundbar and subwoofer connected to my TH685, my neighbors were basically watching the movies with me, so I couldn't use it. The speakers built into the X3000i are very good to the point where I'm happy with the quality until I have my own space where I won't have to worry about anyone except my wife. They have very good sound separation. They get loud without an ounce of distortion. There's enough artificial bass to keep me happy, again, without distortion. They sound clear and they have a good stereo effect. Surprisingly, even though this thing is like towards the center and one side of you, you can't really have it right on top of you in the middle. Anyways, think of it like MacBook Pro speakers, except louder. There is decent audio IO in case you want to connect dedicated audio, which let's be real, if you're paying two grand for this projector, you're going to get dedicated audio. And there is decent IO in general, having pretty much what you need to accommodate most, if not all of your needs. The cooling situation on this X3000i is much better than the TH685, and fortunately it's not really an annoyance, where the fan was spinning so fast on the TH685 that it was basically white noise versus the speakers. The fan on the X3000i runs much quieter and doesn't put out anywhere near as much heat, so that's a welcome difference. But also, there's a massive heatsink in here, kind of like what you see in PC air-cooled systems, and that probably plays a role in keeping this projector cooler than the TH685. Lastly, we have the settings. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I will highlight some important things. Number one is 2D Keystone. This is what you can use to align the image in case you have the projector set up in an angle from any axis. Next is high altitude mode, which adjusts the cooling strategy of the projector to effectively cool it if you live anywhere from 1500 to 3000 meters above sea level, which for us Americans, just multiply that by 3.3, so about 5000 to 10,000 feet. And other than that, you have your basic settings. So if you wanna see what settings there are, just pause or on whatever menu you want to read because I'm not gonna go through the basic stuff. The settings along with anything you plug into the HDMI ports, including your Apple TV and Android TV, can be controlled with this remote. It's got your basic navigation and volume controls as well as your source change button and game and audio modes. That's pretty much it. Now this whole time I've been talking about the X3000i, but as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are two new projectors, this and the TK700. The TK700 has most of the same features as this, but in a smaller form factor, which I think looks really nice, at least in my opinion. But the main difference between the two are that the TK700 uses a bulb rather than lasers. It only supports sRGB and not the wider DCI-P3 color space. Apparently it's 200 lumens brighter, and it has one speaker rather than two with no optical jack to support it. Everything else about these two are basically the same. So in conclusion, should you get the X3000i, the TK700, or go with something else? Well, I actually think if you want a projector that has everything, then you'll want the X3000i. Don't get me wrong, the TK700 is a good projector, but I feel like if you're already spending $1,500, you may as well spend the extra $500 for the Mac Daddy because if you think of it, eventually you'll have to replace the bulb of the TK700 and you'll need to replace it four to five times to be able to match the life on one of the X3000i's full laser array. And once you replace that many bulbs, you've already spent more than the cost of the X3000i without some of the features of the X3000i. 
But if you can't shell out the extra $500, then the TK700 is still a great option. Remember, it's basically this, but with a bulb and only sRGB support. It still functionally runs mostly the same. However, I really want to reiterate that I really love this X3000i. It's been amazeballs for the past few months that I've had it, and what I what really gets me is just how cheap it is for the features you get. Like, go on Google right now and search for 4K laser projectors. The next cheapest one is $3,000, a whole 50% more than this, at least for a quality unit. I'm not talking about those cheap, crappy things that you've never heard of before. Now, to be fair to those other more expensive projectors, I have no clue what the actual user experience is. They might be worth the extra G, but I, what I can say is that this X3000i is a beast for the price, and I think it fights above its weight class. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to see some behind the scenes stuff. Join our Discord where you'll be able to chat with the community, ask questions, have them answered. Consider subscribing and have a great day every day. Peace.